Okay, we're, uh, we just got some of the new LCDs in that are full screen, basically not missing the bottom row. So I know people have been anxious for these. So uh, here we go. We're going to, we're going to refurbish this control head with these new LCDs. And I'm going to run through a series of tests before we start selling them. Okay, here's the new full screen LCD mounted in that control head. Let me zoom in on this. As you can see, it's uh, now perfect. I'm going to put a picture. I've got another control head here that I'm going to uh, hook up. It's got an official Yezu OEM uh, LCD in it. So I'm going to shoot a picture of this and I'm going to put a side-by-side -side comparison with the uh, Yezu part. Okay, so uh, here we go. This is comparison benefits of the shop owning multiple 857s. Um, this is a comparison between an OEM Yezu control head, new one, and the refurbished one using the non-OEM part. I'll let you guess for a second and I'll show you which is which. And uh, things like, uh, as I showed you the features, hit the display mode here for the big You can see the difference between the two. The settings are comparable. I like this one so you can see the detail a little better. Um, let me go ahead and bring up the uh, S meter reading. Oops. So you can see that. There's this one. There's this one. Well, I got that artifact thing going on there. It's just, again, there's just, these things reflect light like crazy. So anything that's going on, that's, that's not really flashing. It's just sort of the angle here. So compare those two. So, anyway, okay, the answer is that's the non-OEM part, that's the new Yezu control head. So, you be the judge. There you go. Okay. More of the same. Um... We're going to go to trying to show you all the features here. Okay, we're going to uh, let me get at the same position here because my overhead lighting. Okay, let's go to one through same awful burned out blue there. We get to 32 so that's that you can see virtually the same it's the uh, what I refer to as the 891 frequency for those who uh, want the big frequency display still shows SWR this is again this is the sorry about the burnout from the lights this is the uh, non-OEM, full screen. Okay, so what you just saw was me installing a panel that has been refurbished with the new full screen LCD. And I installed that in the control head. 
So what we're going to do now is actually I'm going to take you back to what I do to actually refurbish a control head panel assembly. These are what actually goes inside of the housing on the control head and represents all of the electronics. Okay, we're going to uh, refurbish this panel assembly here with the new full screen LED. Let me turn this on. All right. The first thing we're going to do is take this old assembly off of here, and we need to preserve that uh, plastic frame. But uh, I'll show you a little bit of video as we go here. Be removing the two screws one there and one right there that holds that plastic frame right there in place so that's first step okay so we took a soldering iron and we melted these connections for the old lcd we removed this obviously this goes into the garbage pail so here we go okay so here's the solder tip that i'm going to use for prepping the board here and prepping the lcd one of the things that's a little tricky and these these are a little trickier the full screen ones because they have more blind solder joints so every one of those little copper uh, strips that you see at the bottom edge those are the blind solder joints that you have to solder I get a lot of these from customers that try to do the work themselves and run into trouble. And uh, the biggest issue is the fact that when you're trying to make a solder joint, you have to pretty much do it by experience. In other words, knowing what it's gonna take, not to cause solder bridges and get too much solder under them, but yet make good solid connections. So we're gonna, first of all, prep the board here and I'll show you the LCD prep in just a second. Okay, I used a liberal amount of flux, liquid flux on this, to make sure that the uh, oxidation, remember these are, some of the, in some cases these panels are 10, 15 years old, so uh, you need to make sure you got fresh solder on all of those tabs. Another thing that's very important is when you take this off, is to make sure that you get it off, hard to focus here without any of these little tabs still being stuck to the uh, to the solder tab. So you wanna make sure, you see one right there at the very end was broken. <clears throat> so you wanna make sure that none of these fingers are still stuck to that board because it's gonna cause a major problem if they are. So this one's all prepped. Let me see if I can get you different angles to show that uh, there's nice fresh solder on every one of those joints. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tin all of those gold plated parts. It's actually a mil spec requirement, by the way. Um, even though those are gold tabs, you still need to tin them so that they, they take, you, you can actually, and again, by virtue of the fact this is a blind solder joint you're about to make, you want to make sure that those things are tinned and, uh, that will help the two tend to tend um, surfaces melt together. So we're going to put some solder on those tabs. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, as I mentioned, we're going to pre-tin, get rid of this gold. Zoom in a little bit on those fingers before we install it. So uh, go ahead. I'm going to tin these and I'll come right back. A, uh, I should have said step one, and you can see it here, a very, very liberal dose of liquid flux, which is uh, uh, really, really helps with the flow, getting rid of any oxidation or issues. I know these things are brand new because uh, uh, they just sent them to me. They just made these. These are hot off the press. Okay, so here is all those leads. They're tin plated. It's it's amazing. Years ago, when I did uh, 
worked for Westinghouse and we did electronics radios for the military. We'd buy these components with gold plated leads and buy a uh, mill spec. The first thing you had to do was plate them with tin. It's like, why did I pay extra for gold plated leads when the first thing I do before I can install them is to tin plate them? So anyway, I always, always found that very peculiar, but I will tell you now that I've been doing some of this stuff as a business hobby in retirement, you betcha. I, I found out very quickly, if I didn't tin plate these things before I soldered them, almost every one of them I had to go back and redo. So lessons learned. There you go. And you can see that the uh, amount of flux on here is quite extensive, and which I will obviously clean off here momentarily. Okay, so um, this is in place here. And uh, I verified that all these little tabs are lined up well. Let's zoom in here a little bit. See if they're well lined up. And as a matter of fact, they're so small, it depends on the camera angle. But um, you want to make sure that this thing is nailed down exactly where it needs to be. And uh, I've got one of these little USB microscopes that uh, I use for this. I'm trying to grab it here. Um, I use this to verify that everything's lined up good. So don't don't rely on. Um, even though I'm wearing magnifying goggles, I still use the microscope to do my quality assurance inspection. Before I go any further, there's all the solder joints that are made. And uh, so uh, I use a temperature controlled iron. Very 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 important. If you overheat these pads, you're done. You're, you'll wreck the LCD, you'll wreck the, uh, the PC anyway, board. So uh, next thing I do is I power it back up and I'm just gonna, before I put the, the uh, mounting uh, plate in place and all that, the frame, I go ahead and check, uh, make sure uh, I'm out about to bury a bad connection. So I'll show you that here in just a second as soon as I free up my hands to move things around. Okay, here's the LCD. Uh, I laid a paper towel under it to give it a white background just so that I can ensure that the uh, all the segments are lit and working fine. So um, here we go. Let's see if I can turn this on while I'm holding my phone here. There we go. Oh, yeah, there we are. You see the LCD is working great. So now... What we're going to do is we're going to mount it in the uh, in the housing. One of the things that uh, is pretty common is the uh, foam that's on actually stuck onto the uh, uh, the housing, the plastic housing. Over time, it deteriorates. It gets that real slimy, tacky, sticky foam melted kind of thing going on, and uh, you want to you want to go ahead and clean all that off, just because. Sure as a devil, when you're putting this thing together, you're going to wind up with uh, some of that gunk stuck on the LED, or excuse me, LCD, um, or, you know, on the, your background screen. This, has, this is transparent. It shows everything. I mean everything. Fingerprints, you name it. It backlights everything. Here's the old, an old LCD. You see these little triangular um, holders that are at the bottom of the LCD here. The Yezu LCD is much thinner than these new LCDs. They're much thicker. The problem is that they don't hold the new ones down. As a matter of fact, they actually keep them kind of raised up. So I remove those completely. You see they're gone. And that'll allow that LCD to come down and sit on that bottom ledge like the Yezu part does. But, uh, um, and, and those things serve zero purpose because they're, uh, they're too, it's too shallow. So anyway, long story short, I removed those little holding tabs. There it is. That's what the LCD 
mounted to the uh, light diffusing frame. So you see it is perfect. So no more argument there about missing that bottom line. Not that I could ever imagine. I mean, I, I, I get LCDs in here to work on that you can't read them. So the missing line to me was just, as I've said in my videos, absolutely nothing. But uh, this is modern technology. Um, I've, I'm in the process, I'm going to run some temperature tests on this thing. Make sure that it uh, that it's as good as the other ones that I've been using, and then we'll uh, we'll get these on the market, folks.